Happy weekend, folks. I am going to attempt a real-time project, something I've never done before. Let me rephrase that. This particular combination, you know, that's going to fall. Uh, this particular combination I've never done before. And if you followed my channel for any period of time, you'll, you may, maybe you won't, but you may recognize this particular, what would I call this, uh, face, uh, a, I picked this up uh, from somebody else because as I was doing my ideas for kitchen remodeling, uh, for my resurfacing, this particular, I think I did this three years ago, I had to dig this out of the garage, and this was my experiment of uh, just the uh, general finish uh, milk white. Then the finish with uh, the wax, then me playing with uh, aging techniques and antiquing and aging it. And I don't know if the light is going to pick this up very well. I don't want to be in the sun doing this. <clears throat> but uh, I have since done ooh, more than a few room remodels that you've seen on the channel that were not planned. Whereas the kitchen remodel has been planned for years and years, but things have kind of gotten in the way, like uh, mobility, hip replacement, COVID, and now uh, hip replacement number two. So, uh, needless to say, my kitchen remodel plans have not come together like originally planned. And during that time, I was kind of debating on, you know, which one of... The aging techniques, you know, when you look at the corners and what I've done done up here, which one I liked, and it was one of these two. Sometimes it's this one, sometimes it's that one. And one of the funny things, um, whenever you have like an oak cabinet face, is whenever people try to paint the oak cabinets, they want to get rid of the grains. You know, and you can see the grains more prominent on this side than maybe right here. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do was uh, recently, recently is a relative term, within the last period of time, uh, months, how's that? Uh, I've come across, by mistake, <coughs> a technique called Ceruse, C-E-R-U-S-E, -E, and... Um, it's a two-toning technique, kind of similar to, uh, and the only reason I'm doing this is so that I have my markers on my, where I, where I tried to do this. And the whole point of Ceruz is to not hide the grain, but pull the grain out. The two-tone process of pulling the grain out. So I'm going to try and do that. You know, I've watched a couple videos on it. I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um, the Van Dyke brown glaze is what's actually, uh, is how I antiqued this particular, two, these particular two sections. So we went from, again, just the white paint to the wax and the antiquing. And the whole idea behind the Ceruse process is to, uh, to pull the grain out. And when I saw how they did it, I was like, wow, that's a tremendous waste of, uh, of glaze. Okay, so the idea, and again, I have no clue what I'm doing other than, you know, doing it. So the idea was to, and the, 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 the videos I've watched, the guy just splashed the, uh, the face of the cabinet with the uh, with the glaze like just totally splashed it whereas I'm being quite a bit more conservative right now and uh, it's been a while since I've worked with this glaze but if memory serves it was kind of quick drying and also if memory serves I'll spill so let me move that out of the way and again the whole point is instead of being 
and I already spilled it on this side. Instead of, instead of being conservative, it's to, you know, pull the grain out. So I'm going to try and pull the grain out. And I may have actually done too much painting on, on this particular cabinet face. This because you'll see that I'm not getting a whole lot of uh, of grain pull out here. I mean, it's there. But boy, that's a whole lot easier to do than... Uh, and, and I'll say that that's uh, coat number one. Let me try and get it off my... Uh, other areas so my demarcation lines are a little but that's kind of interesting so we go from uh, you know a bright white again try to keep these clean so that I have my original So it's definitely a lot faster than uh, than the antiquing process I was doing myself uh, with the multi steps here. Boy, it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing that's a junk junk piece of wood or a test strip. How's that? I'll call it a test strip. But you know that's. It's like a, uh, a different, uh, completely different technique for, for aging. And you got to be careful because uh, the glaze gets to a point where it's tacky and then you start pulling it off. So I'm going to let that dry for a bit and we'll be back. So that's been drying for enough time for me to clean my brush and stir stick. Let that dry too. And what I'm noticing is it looks like somewhat of an orange peely, I don't know if the lens will pick this up, orange peely effect. Uh, so the, the, the primary effect of the ceruse is to actually pull the grain out. And uh, you know, obviously it did that in certain areas. But if you look at uh, what I would call the more radical approaches to this on, uh, on YouTube, uh, people were taking wire brushes to actually brush grooves in um, to magnify the effect. And they were also using colors like instead of a white base, they were doing like a gray base with a black tint or a black glaze. Um, I'm not a big fan of the whole gray craze, you know, walls that are gray, cabinets that are gray. I'm, I, to me, gray is just a boring color, and it might be the in or it color of right now in the middle of 2021, but uh, it's not for me. So uh, I won't be doing any gray, um, but I do like brown and the, and the softer shades that, uh, that this kind of creates. So, you know, maybe this is something to consider. But if uh, I, I will be experimenting some more on this, this was just a quickie, you know, how would it look on a, on a rough mock-up? I think what I would do is, uh, and maybe I'll do it on the reverse side here, is uh, maybe I'll ceruse this side. And uh, by that, I would uh, probably uh, sand this lightly, uh, just enough to get all the oils and gunk off, like stuff like this. If you can see yeah stuff like that and uh, then I would shoot it with uh, a light coat of primer not necessarily the milk white because you know the effect is the uh, is the brown glaze on top of the white not so much what type of white it is so I think what I would do is I would shoot this maybe that'll be another weekend project uh, shoot this with uh, primer, sand it so that uh, we lose the orange peel, uh, and with just a single coat of primer, these this grain might pop a little better than 
um, what, what we're seeing here because this is, I think, one coat of primer. One or two coat. I'd have to go back three years to see what I did on this. Uh, it's either one or two coats of primer and then one or two coats of the milk white. So um, there's, there's, there's paint here. And again, part of the process was to eliminate uh, or reduce the, uh, the grain as much as possible. And uh, now with the ceruz, I'm actually trying to pull the grain out. So I think what we will do is uh, ceruz this side. So uh, I think you'll see another video in the near future from me on uh, ceruzing. Because I'm not going to make that any darker than it already is. So I think what I'm looking for is a better effect of the actual... Uh, grain two-toning so that's it for this weekend's light time video of a uh, totally different topic nothing even remotely related to reloading take care okay today is gloomy project day so if you recall from the other day i took the primed and i forget how many coats of primer and or the uh what is it, uh, milk, milk white, chalk white, general finish, whatever that milky white was, chalk white, yellowy white, off white, this color. And uh, I didn't like the, I don't know, if, again, if you can see it, the orange peel effect. And that is because of, uh, I think I sprayed this one, I don't remember. But uh, what I'm going to do, because I found out how easy and quick it was to do this versus this was a prime paint apply the wax apply the antiquing it, this was a much more involved process this is pretty quick and easy so i think what i'm going to do as i said on my previous video is i'm going to take this side and uh, i'm going to rough this up a little bit so i will sand it with uh say like a whew, maybe 120 ish uh, maybe even coarser just to break off the finish and uh, expose some of the grain a little bit more and then maybe take a wire brush lightly and do some grain enhancement but uh, you'll be along for the journey so more to come so I'm gonna start with 100 grit I'm not gonna bore you with uh, having you watch me sand I think that's there's enough of that everywhere so uh, this would be step one that was like literally a 30 second maybe a minute sanding uh, now I'm going to find an old janky wire brush that uh, I'm going to try and uh, enhance the grain after I blow this out a little bit. Obviously couldn't get into the corners with my circular orbital sander. Uh, and again, the whole idea behind this is just enough to... Barely applying any any pressure whatsoever. Old brush. Really old brush. I can feel the grain. Not that I couldn't feel it before, but uh, obviously it's uh, it's enhanced. So I'm uh, I'm not going to sand this down because the whole idea of this ceruse effort is to pull the grain out more so than this. So next step is a uh, a light primer. Back in a moment. 
move the camera out of the way a little because I was constantly almost tripping on it. This is my favorite primer. We used this most recently on the room remodel to uh, cover the red paint. So I'm going to do a quick thin coat with this on here. And again, you probably don't need to watch me paint. So back in a few. All right, so there is a wet coat of primer. And I'll call attention to a couple areas like right here where you can see very clearly the brush strokes. And I was trying to get rid of those because I'm guessing those will catch the, uh, the glaze more than other areas. I tried to do different levels. So I'm much lighter here. I'm light here. Maybe a little heavier here. A little heavier with the primer here. And then much lighter here because I want to see what the effects are uh, of the glaze. So let that dry and then it'll be glaze time. Alright, I don't remember if I mentioned it prior to cleaning off my brush and putting stuff away. But um, my goal on this side was to get the grain as least visible as possible with the most... Uh, coats of either uh, primer and or paint and this is just the opposite in fact again I, I talked about the the differences in the coats and you can almost still see the wood here so again the idea was a really light coat of uh, primer to uh, to pull this out uh, as much as possible so this is pretty dry we'll let it dry some more and then we'll be back all right, we got everybody and their brother doing yard work right now. And I'm gonna take some 150 sandpaper. And I wouldn't even call what I'm gonna do sanding. I'm just trying to knock down all the little things that would have stuck up. That is all I'm going to do. I would listen to the echo of lawn care. It's usually on a uh, morning where I have a conference call. All right, back in a minute for the magic. Okie dokie. I guess I'll start on the inside. Or maybe just kind of just make a mess start up and work down. Again, I'm trying to use it sparingly, but still liberally. So that's not a term I'm used to using. Motherfuckers are amazing. We 
have lawns the fucking size of postage stamps. And these fuckers take fucking forever. It's um, not like in the corners and how the corners come out. Too much. I have to figure out a new strategy for the corners. I'm going to go through another piece of. God, you think they were fucking uh, doing the lawn of a mansion? Okay, so I have to be honest, not real impressed. So I'm using that first cloth right now, the one with all the, the leftover All right, we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and see how how it looks. I gotta be honest, I'm not really liking this at all. I thought that was. Maybe after another coat, we'll see how it looks. So we'll call that coat number one. But yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see that going up in the kitchen. No, I don't. I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna do that. Good morning, YouTubers, fellow reloaders. And we're not reloading today. No more day at the range. Happy birthday, Marka. Today is the final attempt at making this look less shitty. 
because it looks super shitty right now. Looks beyond shitty right now. Actually, you know what? We're not going to worry about the corners because I think there was too much shit in the corners before. So this is coating number two. Which again, not really trying to make it so dark, but I'm not getting the Ceruse effect that I was seeing online. And uh, I'm thinking Ceruse was wishful thinking on my behalf. Fuck, that looks better than the fucking Saroos did. <laughs> so you know what? Yeah, I actually do like that better. <laughs> ah, that's kind of funny. All right, so we're just gonna leave that set for a minute. Noticing that on my glaze can, I use the cheapest shit cans for paint and stain now. I have to go to maybe uh, Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a replacement quart. Amazing how people just drive by and look at you like you're crazy. Which is probably not too far from the truth. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Okay, this is a giant fuck you. Yep. Yep, this is a major fuck you. I don't know if it's because I'm doing it in the sun that it's set too long. Yeah, that's a no-go. This project is officially over. I'm beyond disappointed in how that turned out. So much so that I took a Mr. Clean and just scraped the shit off of it. Fucking disgusting on how bad that turned out. So we will not be ceruzing. Back to, uh, this came out even better than that fucking ceruzing. Yeah, that just, no. No, no, no. So back to the drawing board. Yeah, it's going to be one of these two. Back to my original design. Oh well, happy birthday America.